They did the monster mash. The monster mash. It was a graveyard smash. They did the mash. Hi everyone. Today we're going to be making a haunted house and some spooky trees. We have a lot of materials we're going to be using. We have tempera black paint. We have watercolor paint. We have paint brushes. We have straws, permanent markers. I have a pen. Um, because for the trees, we're going to be uh, blowing paint to get some really spooky branches. I've never really done this before, so this is going to be my first attempt at doing this, and I think it's going to turn out really, really well. So the first thing we're going to do is paint the background using our orange and yellow watercolors. I like to blend these colors together, so it's going to look really cool when we're finished. So my background is dry and now I'm going to put a moon on the background. So I actually traced a circle on a white piece of paper and I'm going to glue it onto my background. You can put your moon anywhere in the background. I'm going to put mine on the top left corner. Okay, so now we're going to start drawing our haunted house. So I've got my coloring and my drawing all done. The reason why it's all black is because we're making silhouettes. And a silhouette is anything that's um, an outline or a shape that's really dark or black against a light background. So if this is at night 
you'd only be able to see everything really, really dark. So that's why we're using black. I think it looks really cool. And for smaller details, I used a pen. Uh, a thicker marker, it would just kind of blend together, wouldn't really look right. Okay, so here comes the fun part. We're going to be painting and using a paintbrush and a straw and black tempera paint. I put a little bit of water in there uh, just so when we blow the paint, it can um, go really nice and easily. So that looks pretty creepy. Now I think the problem that I ran into was I used a really thin straw, a really small straw. So I've switched and I'm going to use a, a bigger straw. Um, the, the thing also to remember is take breaks when you're blowing. You don't want to pass out and you don't want to get a headache. So I'm going to make one more treat on the other side of the page. So. So I finished with blowing the paint. Now, when you start or try new techniques, you're not really sure sometimes what the end result's gonna look like. And to be honest, I didn't expect it to look like this. So what I always tell my students is, if you make mistakes, it's always an opportunity to try and turn it into something else or something beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is get a small paintbrush and make some really tiny trees going up into these these big trees. some more trees down and I think it looks really really good. Um, I'm gonna put some bats in the background. Alright, I'm finished my haunted house Halloween project. I think it turned out amazing. I ran into a few problems but I found an excellent solution and actually turned out a lot better than I imagined. So I hope you had a fun time following along with this video. I certainly had a fun time making this project. Now if you made your own I'm really excited to see what you came up with because if you use the blowing technique with the paint like I did yours will look a lot different from mine. And that's the interesting thing about blowing paint is that no two pieces of artwork will look the same. So you have a unique piece that no one else can recreate. And I think that is such a cool thing. So I hope everyone has a happy Halloween. Stay safe, and I'll see you later. They did the mash. They did the monster mash. The monster mash. It was a graveyard smash. They did the mash. It caught on in a flash. They did the mash. He did the monster mash.